Well, we have another special song. That's, and I don't know her. Did, oh, are, are you singing? Okay, I, I'd forgotten your first one. <laughs> God. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I've sung this song before, but it's my. I think this is over. That one, yeah. I've sung this song before, but I got five girls, and they ask me all the time different questions. Mom, should I do this? Should I do that? I had one call me this week, and she said, Mom, I don't know which way to turn. Annie's graduating. Mom, I don't know what I should do. And I just told each one of them, I said, you know, I didn't ask God what I should have done years and years and years ago when I was a kid. I let me guide it. And I get in a mess, and I got in a mess, and I got in a mess. Mm -hmm. But I thought I was doing okay. And I'd get back up on my feet, and I'd get knocked down again. And I'm not saying that you don't have trials and tribulations. But with God, it's a whole lot easier. And I told yeah, Annie, and I said, Annie, I'm going to tell you something. You start now leaning on God. Mm -hmm. And you'll save you from a marriage and a divorce and a marriage and a divorce. Mm -hmm. I said, you start now, and it'll save you from a drug addict. I was never a drug addict, but a drug addict or a drinking problem or just problems after. I said, you start now and God will get you a relationship that you, that God, that he wants you to yes. have. Yes. He'll give you the job he wants you to have. He'll take your singing career where he wants you to, mm -hmm. not to some bar on a Saturday night that everything's all broken. So when I get down and I get all these problems brought to me, the only thing that I can do is just stand still. I told her, I said, just stand still. Mm -hmm. God will tell you. It may be in the middle of the night. It may be from some friend telling you something. And all of a sudden, God said, that's, you're supposed to be with what, doing what that one said. Or this one or whatever. But follow God. So just listen to the words. It's hard to see it now You feel you're walking all alone He is there, no doubt When the storm around you rages When you're tossed to and fro When you face life's decisions Not sure which way to go Stand still And let God move Standing still is hard to do When you feel you have reaching He'll make a way for you Stand still and let God move When the enemy surrounds you And the walls are closing in when the tide is swiftly rising And you wonder where he's been Friend, there never was a moment That his arms are reaching out You can rest assured and be secure God is moving right now Stand still and let God move Standing still it's hard to do When you feel you are reaching He'll make a way for you Stand still And let God He'll make 
stand still and let God move. Stand still and let God move. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. Amen. Amen. The hardest part is for us to stand still. <laughs> but God has an answer and has a way of helping us if we will stand still and trust him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you'll turn in your Bibles this morning to Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to begin reading there. And I want to use this title for my message Getting ready to leave. Getting ready to leave. And we're going to read several verses here, and then we're going to notice some things about the situation. Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to read 14 verses. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to to the number of the souls, every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. They shall take of the blood... Strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. They shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Shall we pray, Lord? We thank you for your word. And I pray that you would help us now to receive from this word, that we will receive from it what speaks to us today. Even though this event happened a long time ago, and yet it has such meaning for us today. And I pray that you will touch. And may our hearts be tender towards you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. I want to notice four things to start with out of this passage. That they were to take a lamb that was without blemish, and it was to be killed and eaten. Now, there were several details in this. But the thing I want to notice, first of all, is that this lamb was to be watched, and, and it was to be without blemish, to be killed and eaten. And I thought when I was studying, I thought, you know, we can't decide just any old way to do it. We can't decide, I want to 
do what I want to do, how I want to do it, no matter what God says. God has a plan and he has an order, so they, this is what they were to do. Number two, the blood of that lamb was to be taken and applied to the, the doors and over the, the, the side posts and over the door of each house. They were to do that. It says they were to eat the lamb. Third, they would eat the lamb dressed, ready to exit. And they all dressed up when they ate this lamb. And fourth, they were to stay inside their homes in order to be covered by the blood so that the death angel would not come to their house. It required faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. One of the things that really stood out to me because they had to be willing to obey, but they had to have faith in what God says was going to happen. So they had their faith, they must be obedient before this would be happening. That's the way we must live our lives as well, in faith and obedience. God demanded the sign of the blood on the doorpost of those houses. It wasn't because he couldn't tell the Egyptians apart from the Israelites. He, he knew who was who. But it was because he wanted to teach the people the importance of obedience and of the blood redemption. You see, this was preparing for the Lamb of God, the perfect Lamb, who would come later to take away the sin of the world. So he wanted them to see this. Now, for Christians, the Passover contains symbolism that points ahead towards Jesus Christ. In fact, the New Testament teaches that the Jewish feasts are a shadow of things to come. Now, because the Passover was a new beginning for them, it was a new thing for them, this month in which it occurred, it became the first year for the nation. It became a new year for the nation. So that's where they started their year from, was from this point. They were to observe Passover every year at this particular time in this month to remind them that their very existence was because God delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. If you're saved, you're born again, you have a spiritual birthday when you gave your heart and life to the Lord. I cannot go back and tell you what that day was. I don't remember now. I know I was nine years old, but I don't remember the day. Now, Kay was saved on April Fool's Day, April 1st, so she said the joke was on the devil. <laughs> the devil got fooled. <laughs> so she knows what day. I, I don't remember the particular day. I just know how old I was. But every one of us, if we're saved, we have a spiritual birthday. And it started a new life for us. Just This, is, this was going to be new for them. When we give our heart and life to the Lord and we have that spiritual birthday, it starts a new life for us. And so in a little while, we're going to observe communion together, the Lord's Supper. And when we do that, it ought to remind us that the most important thing and the most valuable thing happened on our spiritual birthday when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. You will never have anything greater happen to you. No, I don't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what you acquire, what you attain to. There will never be anything greater in your life than your spiritual birthday when you gave your heart and life to the Lord. That's the most important and most valuable thing that will ever happen to your life when you accepted him as your Savior. And you need to cherish that. We need to cherish that and hold it dearly because it's more valuable than anything you'll ever attain. And there are some things that we put some pretty high value on and price on that we have or that we know or that we obtain. But this is above all of that. There is nothing greater than to be a child of God. That's the most important. Jesus sent the, mo sent the disciples out. Remember the 70 followers that sent them out one time to go out and preach? They went out two by two and preached, and, and, and they were all excited when they came back and gave a report. And they said, Master, the devils are even subject to us. 
through your name and the power that you gave us. And they were so excited about that, the devils were even subject to them. But Jesus said, well, now, wait a minute. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning, and that is a, a, a great event, okay. But here's what you're the most, the, the thing that you're to be most excited about if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's more valuable than anything that you'll ever know. Hallelujah. So when we take this communion together in a little bit, may that remind us, I am observing what happened. This represents what happened at Calvary for my salvation, the most important event in my life. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for being willing to provide that for us. Hallelujah. The heart and soul of the Passover event was God's grace. And God brought Israel out of Egypt, not because they were such worthy people, but because he was faithful to his covenant. And even so, the faith, the salvation that we receive through Jesus Christ comes to us through the amazing grace of God. Not a one of us deserved to be saved, but because of the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God, he has provided a way that we could be saved and forgiven of our sins that we could not do in ourselves and could not find any place else. But it's because of the amazing grace of God that he provided that for us. Now, when they put that sprinkle, that blood on the doorpost, it was done in obedient faith. They were doing it because they had faith in what God had said to them and they were being obedient to it. And that, that event brought, brought salvation or redemption to them the death angel passed over their house when the death angel came through that night. Well, it's the same for us today. Salvation through Christ's blood is obtained only through the obedience of faith. And after we do that, we've got to continue on in a repentant attitude and, and be hey, covered by the blood. That's the only way that we can continue in our salvation is that we stay under the blood because it's the blood is our redemption and our salvation. And we must continue to have our faith and trust in Jesus as our Savior. Now back to our title, Getting Ready to Leave. In the, peril of the, of the parable of the ten virgins, the five foolish ones, remember, they weren't ready because they didn't keep oil in their lamps. Hmm. You see, our salvation, our walk with God requires an up-to-date experience with God and that relationship with the Lord. We can't live on, well, so many years ago, we can't live on that. We've got to stay ready, dressed, ready to leave. Dressed, ready to leave. This is an ongoing experience and relationship, not a one-time event. We don't just give a heart to the Lord and we go on our merry way and live in our own way. This is an ongoing experience and relationship that we walk with God after we give our hearts and lives to the Lord so that we will stay dressed, ready to leave when the Lord comes. And he is coming. <laughs> Another time at a wedding, a man tried to get into the wedding without a wedding garment on. And when he saw that... when they, the master saw he didn't have a wedding garment on. He said, no, you can't stay here because you don't have a wedding garment on. You've got to have the wedding garment on. Peter wrote in, in 1 Peter, he said, you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a, a lamb without blemish and without spot. And Romans 13, 14 says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ Make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We are saved by the blood, but after that happens, we are to put him on. We are to eat him up, as it were. He becomes the very fiber of our lives. In fact, that's what Jesus said in John, John chapter 6. And I'll give you time to turn there if you want, because we're going to read a few verses. In John chapter 6, Again at verse number 47. It 
says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, Well, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to him, Then, Verily, verily, I say to you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I'll get the page turned here in just a minute. <laughs> For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Notice Jesus said, you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And he wasn't talking about it in a literal sense. They misunderstood. Is he saying we've got to literally eat his flesh? That wasn't what he meant. You've got to put him on. It's not enough to just go to the altar or, or say a sinner's prayer and be forgiven. Then we put him on. He becomes our life. He becomes our very existence. It's about the Lord now. It's not about ourselves. It's not what I want. It's what the Lord wants. And he's to be the, the, the leader of our life. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, it's talking about the Israelites. And it said, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. When they did those rituals back before Calvary, when they went through those forms and rituals, they had to do it in faith or it didn't have any meaning for them. If they just went through the form of offering the sacrifice, if it wasn't done in faith to God, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't mount, it wouldn't mean anything. They had to do it in faith as they kept those sacrifices. Well, rituals will not save you, only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can save you. But when, after we are saved, we're to put him on. That's what Jesus was saying here. I'm that bread that come down from heaven. You put me on. You eat me up, as it were. He, you bec he becomes the very fiber of our life. It's all about him now. We turn our life over to him, and, and we serve him with commitment and service. And I believe the Bible teaches us that we cannot receive him as our Savior if we're not willing to accept him as the Lord of our life. You see, it's not just a, a time where sometime we went forward or we said the prayer and then we go on our merry way and live for self and, and, and what we want to do without service to God because if that's the way we're living, we are not ready to leave. We are not ready to leave when the Lord comes. Well, notice what he said to them. They were to be dressed, ready to go, ready to leave in a hurry. That's the way we're to live also. That's the way we're told to live. In fact, let me read these two or three scriptures here in Luke chapter 20, uh, 21. Take heed to yourself. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So we've got to be dressed, ready to go. 
dress ready to go in a hurry, ready to go in the moment in the twinkling of an eye when the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes. We've got to be ready to go. No time to get ready after that. No time to get ready after that. And there's no sign that's going to happen saying that the Lord's going to come tomorrow or the next day or whatever. You're not going to have anything like that. So that's why we have to live dressed, ready to go at the time when Jesus comes. So we'll be caught up to be with him. Well, after the Passover happened, because he, what we read in Exodus, he was preparing them, getting ready for this first Passover. Also, part of it has reference to afterwards. This is how you operate afterwards. But in that particular setting, when it was the right time, after they had the lamb, washed it and got it all ready, when, when it was time, they would kill that lamb. They would eat that. They would stay in their house. Of course, they put the blood on the doorpost. They would stay there. And that night, the death angel would come through at midnight, and it passed over their house because the blood had been applied. Well, they were to observe this every year. And the reason they were to do it every year was to remember, to remind them of what happened to them, how they came out of a, a, a bondage, and how the... the and so until the Messiah came, they would observe it. That was God's intention for them to observe it every year until the Messiah came. Now, they haven't done that. Many years they went and, went and didn't do it. Even the Bible, you can read about, there were a lot of years they didn't observe that. But God intended for them every year to have that Passover sign to remind them how they were brought out of Egyptian bondage. And so they were, they were to do that every year at that same time, to remind them until the Messiah who would come would be the Passover lamb for the redemption of mankind. And, and he would fulfill all of those offerings. What all those offerings represented in the, in the Old Testament, Jesus fulfilled those when he came and gave himself as a sacrifice on the cross. And so after Calvary, now then Christians observe the Lord's Supper, and we do that. We do it more than once a year, <laughs> but it, Jesus didn't say. He didn't give us a definite time. He just said, this do as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Some churches do it every, every service, every Sunday. Normally, in the Assemblies of God, we do it at least once a month. And uh, we don't want to do it to the point that, we, that it has no meaning. It's just a ritual. We just go through the form got to mean more than that. We've got to realize what this really means when we take communion. It's never to be done lightly. There are two special times that I believe that the presence of God has to, there has to be real strong reverence. And one of them is when we take communion, we, may, we need to do it with the reverence of why we're doing it. And the second, whenever there's gifts of the Spirit in operation, we need to listen closely to that because that's God is moving, and when those gifts are in operation, and when we take communion, we're talking about the Son of God. And God doesn't look down upon us lightly if we take it lightly. We're talking about God's Son that he gave for us. And when we take this communion of the Lord, God is looking down. And if we don't do it reverently, we can be in danger. In fact, he said, when you study that out, he said, there's some, there's some that have died because of they didn't take it light. They, they took it lightly. They didn't think about what they were doing. Some of you are sickly, he said. Some of them, some have even died because of the way they took it. So it's, it's a very special time. I don't say that to scare you. I just say that, I just say that, that we need to reverence that in a very special way. You see, the Passover reminds them of the exodus out of Egypt. They were spared the death angel. When we observe communion, it reminds us that we are saved from the spiritual death, the second death. We're saved from that as the blood of the Lamb is applied to our lives. And then we live ready for the exodus out of this world. We live ready. Are you ready to leave? Are you getting ready to leave? There's the words of a song that says, I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl, keeping my record straight, watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this world. And when we've accepted Christ, we've realized that we're a sinner, 
we need a Savior. We put our trust in him. He's the Lord of our life. And we allow him to have control and lead our life. We are, we are preparing for the coming of the Lord. If you haven't done that this morning, would you like to do it today? As the Spirit draws you. Because if you don't know him, if you don't do that and don't accept Christ, this communion service has no meaning to you. But to us that are saved, when we take that together, it's a reminder of the love and the mercy of God. We stand in awe of what Jesus did for us when we take communion. We think about what he did, the price that he paid. We'll talk a little bit more of that when we use the scriptures when we actually take the communion in a little bit. But I'd like for you to get your songbook, if you will, this morning and turn to page 243. And I'd like for us to sing a part of this song before we take communion. I, that, this song just came so strongly to me as I was studying and preparing. Talked about the Savior's love. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus. And I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Think about it as we take communion a little bit, but I want us to sing verses 1, 4, and 5, and then we'll take communion. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to cow free and suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me when with the ransomed in glory his face i at last shall see twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my safe Here's love for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <coughs> We're going to pass out the elements at this time, and then we'll get ready to take communion. Uh, Brother Lonnie and Brother Jeff, would you come and help us? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, just help us to take this word and apply it to our lives. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes.
However that is, because mm -hmm. it's in the rapture through death, mm -hmm. so help us to be ready to go. Yes. Help us to serve you and love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hell yeah. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul was referring back to the Lord's Supper, and he said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And when I read that, and I don't usually say, a lot on these, we just usually do it, but he said, my body, this represents the body of Christ. It represents all the things they did to the body of Jesus. And they did so many things to his body that Isaiah said that his visage or his appearance was so marred more than any man. I don't think we can fully comprehend what he looked like after he had gone through all those things and all the beatings. Isaiah said his appearance was so marred. I don't know you could hardly even tell if it was a human being or not with all that he went through. But you know he did all of that. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. So think about that as you take this represents the broken body of Jesus. He said, this do ye 
in remembrance of me. Let's remember him as we take it. Thank you, Jesus. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. The pure, sinless, <coughs> sinless blood of Jesus Christ, who came, gave himself as a sacrifice for us, that we could be saved, laid down his life, gave his body, they took him, they beat him, they did all that. Not only on the cross, but before he ever got to the cross, he spilt blood all the way. That's all they did. <coughs> the blood running down at the cross. Pure, perfect, sinless blood. <coughs> so that we could be saved. That was sufficient to wash away our sins. So he said, this do in remembrance of me. Let's think about his blood. Then I can't help but notice the, the very next verse. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord death until he comes. Every time we take it, we are declaring again, first with thanksgiving, what he did for us individually. And we're declaring again, we believe in cross. We believe in Calvary. We believe in the message of the cross. But we believe that Jesus is our Savior, the only Savior. And so we proclaim that. We do show the Lord's death till he comes. So we do this today because we believe, Jesus, you're coming again. And we're getting ready to leave. <laughs> we are getting ready to leave. Hallelujah. And so I encourage you to stay dressed ready. Don't let distractions and things pull you away. Don't let the cares of life and all the things pull you down. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Stay dressed and ready because any day now we're going to leave. Any day now we're going to leave, so we want to live every day ready, getting ready to leave. And then we're going to be with the Lord. <coughs> it's going to be forever and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. If you're saved today, could you say a big thank you to Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brother Jeff, would you dismiss us this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.